May the Lamb that was slain receive the reward of his sufferings. All glory and honor and power be unto the name of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Don't be afraid to plead with those you love Don't be ashamed of Jesus or the gospel of his love Lift up your voice in boldness Declare the truth you know That Jesus Christ is risen And he can save your soul Cry out against the darkness Plead with men to turn from sin Repent, believe the gospel And be reconciled to him Hear the voice of those in hell Who are crying out in pain Someone The Bible says That there is no other name Under heaven given among men by which we must be saved besides Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and He commands your repentance. In fact, the Bible says that God commands all men everywhere to repent because there's coming a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. And if you're living an unrighteous life, that day is not gonna be a pleasant day for you. On judgment day, God will not judge on a curve. Some of your professors, when they see the final exam grades, will judge you on a curve. They'll bump everybody up. God doesn't work that way. God judges according to his perfect and holy and righteous standard found in his word, the Bible. So while you're cramming for final exams, while you're studying for final exams, you ought to be studying and preparing yourself for the final exam. The final exam. And the final exam will not determine a simple letter grade. The final exam will be something you never forget. You'll walk away from your final exam this month, and within a month, you'll probably forget what your grade was. You won't care one bit what you got on your final exams. When you go to get a job later on, your occupation, your employer will not say, well, what did you get in that final exam back in 2019? Oh, you didn't do very good, sorry, we can't hire you. But God's final exam will have much greater implications. God's final exam will determine where you spend eternity. Very serious, very sober, very important that you get this right, that you get right with God. And the Bible makes it clear, no one is righteous, no, not one. So already starting out, you have a failing grade. Just to start out with, you're already failing God's test. Because God says that liars and thieves will not inherit his kingdom. How many lies though, just today? just this week, just this month, just this year. How many lies have you told? God says that fornicators will not inherit his kingdom. That the sexually immoral will be cast into the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That's what God's final exam says. How are you doing so far? You're failing. You're passing the testing, man? Are you a sinner? Yeah, probably. Well, not probably. You're not, you're not passing the test. Not a thumbs up, the thumbs down. 
but you can change that thumbs down to a thumbs up. It's going to require you to do something. You can become right with God. You can receive His grace and His mercy. But God is calling you to repentance. God is calling you to forsake your sins. For as the Bible says, he that covers his sins shall not prosper. But whoever confesses and forsakes his sins shall find mercy. See, God wants to give you mercy. God wants to give you what you don't deserve, his grace. I got drinks there. Well, I don't want a drink. I have the water of life spring up within me. The water of Christ spring up within me. The Holy Spirit lives inside of me. It's a well that sprung up. It's not stopped. And God wants to give you that water. That water of life can spring up within you. So you never thirst spiritually. You keep coming back to the well of life. But many of you are failing the exam already. Because liars and thieves and sexually immoral fornicators will not inherit God's kingdom. Don't deceive yourselves. Don't deceive yourselves. Don't mock. Don't laugh. Don't think this is some kind of game. This is not a game. This is God's word. This is your eternity on the line. Scripture also says that homosexuals and sodomites will not inherit his kingdom. What a sad testimony to the state of our society that men can think they're born a woman in a man's body. That women can think they're a man born a woman's body. Did God make a mistake when God formed you in the womb and created the spirit of man within him? When God knit you together in your mother's womb, God didn't make a mistake. If you're born a male, you're a male. If you're born a female, you're a female. But what a sad testimony to our society to think those things are acceptable when they're not. They're not acceptable to God no matter what society says, no matter what law says, no sin is acceptable in God's sight. God rejects all sin, every sin, whether it's abortion, killing innocent babies in a mother's womb, or whether it's sodomy and homosexuality, whether it's transgender confusion, whether it's smoking pot and thinking that's okay because America legalized it, certain states have legalized it. God's word is not changed. And God is not changed. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God changes not. He's not a man that he should lie. So when God says something, it's the truth. You can bank on it. So God's word is not changed because of time. God's word is not changed because of society. God's word is not changed because you want it to, because you want to be a sinner. God is very intolerant towards sin. Doesn't tolerate any sin at all. He calls you to repent of sin, to turn from sin, to forsake sin, to go and sin no more. That's what God says about sin. And sinners will be outside his kingdom. So what? where's the hope for sinners? I'm curious, what do you think about people who aren't Christians? What do I think about people who aren't Christians, young lady said? Well, Jesus Christ said, I am the way, uh -huh. I am the truth, you know that he came I am the life, no one comes to the Father but by me. And you know that so with that, listen, you asked, the, you asked a question, do you want to, do you want to, I have not finished yet. Okay. Do you want to hear the answer? Yeah, I think you don't want to hear the answer. I can't hear you if you're up there. You can't hear me? They can hear me all the way over there and you can't hear me? I don't believe you. Okay, so ahead. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, the life. English class, definite article. The, the only, the only way, the only truth, the only life. So I, I de derive from that that there's no other way, there's no other truth, 
and there's no other life. Right. So if you're seeking truth and ways and life through Hinduism, through Islam, through any kind of other religion, Joseph Smith's Mormonism, Charles Taze, Russell's Jehovah Witnesses, it's false, it's a lie, it's wrong, it's You're idolatry. Okay, but your religion came thousands of years after No, it didn't. My religion started in the Garden of Eden. That's where you're confused. Right. The Bible came about thousands of years after. My religion started in the Garden of Eden. Your religion that is the very beginning of humankind. Adam and Eve, the first two humans, is where my religion started. It didn't start in AD 0 or AD 1 when Jesus came into the world. It didn't start when he died on the cross. It started all the way back in the beginning because Jesus Christ is the perfect image of the Father. And in the beginning, God said, let us, Trinity, make man in our image. And John 1 says, in the beginning, the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And He was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things, all things were made through Him. All things were made through Him. And without Him, nothing was made that was made. Does God want me to yell? God wants me to preach. He wants me to lift up my voice like a trumpet and tell you the truth. What prompts you to spread lies like this? There's no lies. I've not uttered one lie. You call Jesus a liar? Well, shame on you. I have to give an account for that idle word, young lady. Jesus Christ is King of Kings, Lord of Lords. You have to answer to him. You're going to bow the knee. You're going to confess Jesus Christ is Lord. And you won't flip God the bird on that day, sinner. You won't flip God the bird on that day. Your mouth will be stopped. Every mouth will be stopped under the law of God. Because you're guilty. You're guilty of sin. You're guilty of being lustful porn watchers. You're guilty of being drunkards. You're guilty of being drug users. You're guilty of being idolaters. And you have no recourse. You have no way of escape except the name you blaspheme, Jesus Christ. You hail the one who hates you. I pity you. You hail the one who hates you. I pity you. But the one who loves you, the one who died for you, you reject and blaspheme his name. Oh, irony of irony. So, so abominable people do abominable things and you cheer for them. Woe unto you. Woe unto you when you call good evil and evil good. When you cheer for sin, and you cheer for the destruction of sinners, woe unto you! When you call evil good and good evil, you put darkness for light and light for darkness, bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. The Bible says that if you call, if you call evil good and good evil, woe unto you! Woe! Not cheer! Not clap, not say, oh yeah, get it. No, repent. Repent of your sins. Follow Jesus Christ. But this world is backwards, just like in the days of Noah. Jesus Christ said, as in the, day, in the last days, just as in the days of Noah. People are eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. And then the flood came upon them, and they weren't ready. And Jesus Christ is coming back as a thief in the night. A thief in the night. Because you're not watching. You're not waiting. You're not praying. The Proverbs 17, 15 says, He who justifies the wicked, and he who condemns the just, both of them alike, are an abomination to the Lord. An abomination, an abhorrence, a disgust to the Lord. And if you truly want to follow God, if you truly want to follow Jesus Christ, you must love the things He loves. You must hate the things He hates. And God hates sin. And because God hates sin, God's going to cast sinners into hell.
You see, on Judgment Day, God won't cast sin into hell. God will cast sinners into hell. On Judgment Day, God won't say, okay, my bad. You were born that way. You couldn't help it. The world was too much for you. You couldn't help but to be in that sin. No, God will not say that. You will have no excuse before God on Judgment Day for your sin. That's why he's calling you today, calling you to repentance, calling you to forsake your sins, calling you to Jesus Christ, to a life of taking up your cross, denying yourself, and following him. A life of, okay, God, I give up my dreams. I give up what I want to do with my life. I surrender to you and say, here I am, Lord. Whatever you want from me, I'll do it. That's what God is telling you to do with your life. Because let's face it, so far, you've done a pretty bad job of running your life. So far, you've been a sinner. So far, you've sinned against God. You cheer for sin, young men? Yeah. Why do you cheer for sin? I like porn. <laughs> Is your porn worth going to hell over? Yes. Yeah. Both yeah. What's that like? <laughs> Young man, all you are is a dog in heat, a peeping Tom, looking upon other people's sexual activity. Shame on you. Shame on you. All porn is an abomination to God. What about love and peace and happiness for all? Well, I don't think you know what love and peace and happiness for all even looks like. That's your problem. You think love is peace is not having a preacher telling you you're wrong and you're on your way to hell. That's what you think love and peace is. But love is wanting the greatest good for somebody. Love is wanting you to have eternal life. That's what love is. And peace with God is found by repentance and forsaking your sin and surrendering to him. Until then, the Bible says there is no peace with God for the ungodly. There is no peace with God for the ungodly. Is there peace with the police for criminals? Absolutely not. Is there peace with judges for criminals? Absolutely not. And if that's true about the natural world, it's infinitely more true about God because God doesn't just see the things you do in public. He sees the things you do in secret, in darkness. He sees those wicked thoughts in your mind. He sees the wicked intent of your heart. He sees the wicked words you speak about people behind their back. He sees the wicked things you do and the reasons you do them. And the Bible says there is no creature hidden from his sight. But all things are naked, uncovered. All things are open to the eyes of him, so we must give an account. Of which God? The only God. The only one God, his name is Yahweh, manifests himself in the Trinity of the Bible. The only true and living God. Every other God is demons, according to Paul, according to scripture. You bow down and worship the millions of gods of Hinduism, you're worshiping demons. And demons used to be good angels before they sin against their creator, and they're a creation of God. So you worship and serve the creature rather than the creator supreme, who is forever blessed, amen. You worship and serve a creature of God who's gone his own way and now desires for you to worship him. Many of you worship celebrities, you worship musicians, you worship athletes, you worship yourself. Many of you do. So all that matters to you is me, me, me. But God says, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. It's not all about you. The Bible says whatever you do, whether you eat or whether you drink, do all for the glory of God. So it's not about you, not about your life and what you want to do with your life. It's about what God calls you to. And God is calling you to repent, to surrender your life to him. Surrender your sexual immorality. Surrender your drunkenness. Surrender your wickedness. Surrender your immodesty. Shame on you. Surrender your immodesty. 
for doing that. Shame on you for even thinking to do that. You had to repent. It's wicked. It's a shame that women want to try to expose themselves in public. What goes through your mind and your heart when a man is preaching about God's word, preaching about eternity, preaching about salvation through Jesus, and you want to expose yourself to them? Shame. It's just demons coming out of you is what it is. Just wickedness that you want to expose yourself like that. In times past, women would pull up their, their shirts and pull down their skirts. They realized the shame of their nakedness. But the Bible says a godly woman will dress modestly. Can I help you? I'm just listening. Okay. So a godly woman, a godly man will dress modestly. Look at that. So special that he can cut a hole in the side of a can and gulp it down. Do you have a class about this here at UC Boulder? Yeah. Wow, let's cheer him on. That's so, such a special skill, right? The things you cheer for amaze me. The things you cheer for absolutely amaze me. You will cheer for a man guzzling down some drink. But when someone offers you eternal life through Jesus Christ, offers you salvation, offer you forgiveness of every sin, you mock, you scoff, you make fun of, you go your own way, you're apathetic towards it. But God is, it's a good thing God's long-suffering towards you, not wanting anyone to perish, but wanting all to come to repentance. God wants you to come to repentance. Doesn't want you to perish in your sins. Doesn't want you to go to hell as a sodomite. Doesn't want you to go to hell as a drunkard or a pot smoker. Yep. Doesn't want you to go to hell as an idolater over yourself or other people. Yeah. God wants you to have eternal life. Yep. The question becomes is this. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul in the end? And here's the question. Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? That's an important. What are you exchanging your soul for today? What sin is so precious to you, so dear to you, that you cling on to it straight to the grave and go to hell forever? You know, Jesus Christ said, if you can gain the whole world and you lose your soul in the end, it would profit you nothing. Good afternoon, everyone. Nothing. I am a preacher's kid. I know a lot about the Bible, actually. Me and Jesus are homies. No, you're not. I like to say I'm a raging lesbian. I don't really have a gender identity. Woo! Uh, Woo! And also, Jesus really wants me to be that way. You know, God wants you to live in eternal damnation. I think that this man really doesn't know what he's talking about. I would like to say, just for all y'all out here, um, Really don't listen to any kind of hate. God doesn't want you to hate people. God doesn't believe in sodomite. God didn't say the word faggots. He said the word fig trees. All right, let's get it straight. So, if you have any questions about the Bible, I would love to answer. I would love to talk to you about it. I grew up in South Louisiana. Again, I'm a preacher's kid. Um, and I don't believe any of this shit that this guy said. So I love you. You should love yourself. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk slash sermon. Amen. Well unto you and the whole world speaks well of you, young lady. You're and also, he said women should uh, cover themselves, which is why I'm wearing just my bra. I normally don't wear bras, so normally I'd be a little naked. God must have told me to wear a bra and stand up to this man. But, um, yeah, that's You don't know God. I do know God. God calls you to repentance and holiness. I met God when I was 18 years old. My first tattoo says, be still because God and I are homies. No, I you're not God's that. homie. I you're an enemy of God. Said, you're an enemy of God. Adulteresses and adult adulterers and adulterers. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? So, so you know God, but you're going to hell. So you know God, but you're going to hell. I actually don't believe in hell because God loves His children too much. To Your lack of belief in hell is make go away. Your lack of belief in China is a make go away. I have a question. Your lack of belief in Australia is a make go away. Your lack of belief in God's judgment jail cell will not make it go away. It will not change the facts that if you're a sinner, you're currently on your way to hell. And God requires repentance. I want you to know that God is based in love. I want you to know that love is.
is God. And I want you to know that this man isn't going to be where we're going to go in the future. That's true. So. That's true. I'm not going to be where you're going. That's true about that. But this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments oh are not commandments burdensome. Love your neighbor as yourself. So you don't love your neighbor. You're leading them to hell. Love the You're leading them to hell. Authorities. You're love leading them to hell. You don't love your neighbors. Love whores. You, don't love your, you don't love your neighbors. You don't love your neighbors. Love sinners. Jesus loved taxpayers. If you believe the hate that this man uses in the name of God, then you don't know the same There's God. not a hateful bone in my body. I'm here to tell you about true love, not this fake love this young lady is talking about, true but love, true love. love, homo love, all love. That's not love, that's lust. That's lust, not love. Who else true is love. Who else is a sinner? I guess you're by yourself. No. Woo! So you cheer your way to hell, but you claim to know God. You say Jesus is your homeboy. You are raised in a church, but it hasn't done you any good. I don't know, man. I think hasn't done. In fact, life you're so far gone. You're so far gone. I would say, did you know good at all? But God can restore you. I have a question. God can I, bring I you back you to repentance. You. Maybe God sent me here today to bring you back to him. Okay, so you know, in fact, I was praying for that. On the way here, I was praying that backsliders, like this young, if she ever slipped forward in the first place, backsliders be brought back to God. Maybe you came here as a Christian. Maybe you came here living for Jesus Christ, but you've departed from the faith. Well, the Bible says, beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. In the book of James, the last two verses of James, there's a message for people like this young lady right here. I'd like to hear it. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way, say they soul from death and covers a multitude of sins. Let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Do you think you stand? Take heed lest you fall. I would like to say to Don't end up in hell because of false love. Don't end up in hell because of fake love. Don't end up in hell because of your sin. Turn to Jesus. Turn and live. Turn and live. Don't die in your sins and go to hell. Turn and live. The grace and mercy of God is available to you if you'll humble yourself. If you'll humble yourself under God's mighty hand, he will lift you up. God wants you to be saved. The Bible says that Christ died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. The Bible says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your heart, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Don't cheer for sin. Lament and mourn and weep. Let Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter return to mourning and your joy into gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of God. God opposes the proud, but God gives grace to the humble. God offers you grace if you'll humble yourself. Do you feel better screaming? You gotta lower yourself. You gotta see yourself in you truth. About yourself you gotta look at God and know you've fallen short, you that you're not you right with God in the midst of your sin. And God is calling you to repentance. God is calling you to repentance. That's what he wants you to do, repentance. Your life of sin is not gonna do you any good. You're gonna end up in hell in the end. You have a miserable life here on earth in your sin. Your conscience bothers you. You're condemned in your sin. And God is offering what you don't deserve. It's by the kindness and compassion of God that I'm even sent here today to tell you the truth. And most of you are so confused. You're so confused that you think love, you think love is accepting everybody as they are, but you won't accept me as I am, will you? Will you? Love is accepting everybody just like they are, but you won't accept the biblical Christian as he is, will you? Because I have the truth and you hate the truth. 
You, have I become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth? Have I become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth? But the one who sows lies into your heart, you cheer for her all the way to hell? Think about how blind that is. Think about how delusional you must be to follow her who's telling you to be a sinner and sin goes before your destruction. Well, I would encourage you not to. I don't want you to, young lady. You don't know what it's like. I don't think you, you even believe what you're saying. Do you really believe you'd rather go to hell? Do you know what hell is like? The fire is never quenched. The worm never dies. There's no exits. There's no sprinkler system. There's no fire hydrant. Just hell and torment forever for the sinner. That's God's justice, God's wrath upon you. And you said you want to go there? There's no party in hell. There's no fun in hell. There's no smoking weed in hell. You're going to be the joint in hell. The smoke of your torment will rise up forever and ever. That's what's going to happen. You have no rest. You have no rest on Judgment Day. The Bible says Christ will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be laughter. There will be joy. No, there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. That's not pleasure. That's not party. That's not with your friends having fun getting drunk. That's the wrath of Almighty God. But that same God's offering you today, right now. He's offering you mercy. He's offering you his kindness. You don't deserve it. You are not deserving of the mercy of God. You are not deserving of the grace and love of God. But he offers it to you anyway. And that's why it's so wonderful, so amazing, so magnificent that he would offer it to you. But don't despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God should lead you to repentance, not continuing in sin, but to repentance. That's where it should lead you. But according to your hardness and your unrepentant heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath. Don't do that. You hear the word of God today? Humble yourself. Submit to God's word. Receive the word with meekness. What's that? I didn't hear you. Say something factual. Everything I said has been factual. Every last word comes from God's word. And God is not a man he should lie. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. See, the word of God is profitable to you. You treat it like a disdainful thing, like an abominable thing, but it's profitable for you. Not only for instruction and doctrine, but for reproof, for correction. And if you love God, you'll love correction. If you love God and his word, you'll love instruction. If you love God and his word, you'll love reproof. But the fool does not love reproof because you love your sin instead. But receive the reproof of the Lord. Receive the correction, Lord, that you might be made right with him. You might be right in his sight. Why do you You're turning people away hate from people. You're turning people away from Christians. I don't hate anybody. Speaking Let's define our terms so we can communicate effectively. Love is not accepting everybody the way they are, not accepting every sin in the world. Love is wanting the greatest good for somebody. Right. And the greatest good for you that you give up your sin, repent, follow Jesus, and have eternal life. Now what is hate? It's hate disagreeing with somebody. It's hate telling someone they're wrong. If that's the, the definition of hate, then all of you hate me, because you don't like what I'm doing. And you're telling me I'm wrong for doing it. You're telling me I'm hateful for preaching this message. But hate is not disagreeing with somebody. Hate is not telling someone they're wrong. Hate is wanting the worst for somebody. Like tell them, go ahead and go to hell. I hate you. I don't care about you. That's hate. 
So according to those proper definitions of those two words, I am loving and I am not hateful. And according to those two definitions of those words, if you're a sinner, you are hateful and you're not loving towards anybody. Because when you love your sin, you hate God. And when you love your sin, you're not loving people. You're being a bad example for them. You're influencing them to sin. You're encouraging them to sin. You're patting them on the back and saying, come on with me to hell. That's not love. It's not love. Say, so let's go to hell and have a party. It's not love. If you love them, you'll be a good example. If you love them, you'll submit to the truth yourself and you'll declare the truth to others. Consider Jesus, God in the flesh. The Bible says God is love. What happened to Jesus? What did the wicked do to Jesus? Did they hang around with him and get drunk and party and have homo sex and be lesbians and smoke weed? No, no. Jesus said about himself in John 7, the whole world hates me because I testify of it that its works are evil. That's all I'm doing. I'm telling your wicked works are what they are. I'm telling the truth about your wicked works, that they're evil. And I want you to come to repentance. I don't want you to end up in hell. I don't want you to get what you deserve. I want you to get what you don't deserve. The mercy and grace of God. And that's what God wants for you too. God is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. What is repentance? Is repentance confessing your sins in a booth to a man through a mesh screen? As the Roman Catholic Church teaches, and he'll give you some things to do to forgive yourself? No. Is repentance, you know, going to do lots of good works to cover up your bad works? No. Get off my canvas! This belongs to my Lord. Amen. The whole earth and the fullness of it belong to Jesus Christ. Amen. And he'll come back someday and rule from Jerusalem. You'll see then, young man, this place belongs to God, not to you. Is this owned by Colorado? <laughs> no, this is owned by God. God is the creator of this planet and the whole universe. He owns it all. All of it. And you can deny it, you can reject it, but you'll see someday. When he parts the sky, every tribe will see him. And they will mourn and weep because of their sins. And some will say to the mountains, to the rocks, fall on us, hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand? You see, they won't obey you though. It takes faith to move mountains and you don't have faith. And nothing can hide you from the face of God. Nothing can hide you from the judgment of God. He sees all. He sees everything. Thoughts, words, deeds, the intents, the motes of your heart. He sees what you're doing and why you're doing it. He's going to call you, give an account. So before that happens, before judgment comes upon you, before you die in your sins and go to hell, before Christ returns, in wrath, to stomp out the grace of wrath. Get right with God. Give up your sin. Your sin's not worth it. No sin is worth going to hell over. No sin is worth enduring eternity and fire for. That's called fornication. God's against it. You know, God is the creator of sex. You know that? Sex in and of itself is not bad. Sex is good within the proper boundaries. And the boundaries God has provided for sexual activity is a male and a female in a monogamous marital relationship. Are you a fucking dog? Or how about a pig like you? Young man, the Bible says out of the mouth comes the overflow of the heart. Amen. You have a filthy septic tank heart because you have a toilet for your heart, man. Oh, I just want to burn right along Set the tank there. mouth, toilet for a heart. But God can cleanse your heart. He should be just like you. Every other word is a filthy word. To be just like him, but God cleansed me 
God changed me, and now I have pure words come out of my mouth. I'm not afraid. I fear God, so I'm afraid of. I fear God, nothing else. Oh, God did it. Excuse me. What did you say, man? God did what? Everything apparently is too complex otherwise. So what did it? Nothing? What? What did that? Nothing? Nothing did it? Nothing necessarily Wait a minute. So you're telling me matter came from non-matter? Intelligence came from non-intelligence? Life came from non-life? That is not scientific. That is not intelligent. That's nonsense. What is life to me? Life, life is God breathing life into somebody. I have life, you have life. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. You're gonna run away now, tell between lens, right? Gonna run right now? So deal with you, man. Do you believe in ABO Genesis? Do you believe in that? That life sprung up from nothing? Yes, because that's actually how it works. And, and where? And how is that science? Have you ever observed life coming from non-life? Yes. No, There's not scientific at all. That's completely in. blind faith, young man. Blind faith, though it is. I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. Young man, are you assuming I haven't taken any classes? You obviously should take a couple more, man. So I can be like you? Nobody wants you here. Well, then walk away. Christianity looks bad, but no, this is our campus. You walk away, man. Actually, it's not your campus. Actually, it is. $56, no. a year. It's a public campus, actually. So we pay $56, campus. Not a student here. I don't have to be a student. It's a public campus. But do you pay $56,000? Do you take constitutional classes here? Yeah, of course I do. I'm a no so that you know that this is not your campus. There's a taxpayer paid campus. The only reason your your admission fees, your tuition is so low because taxpayers pay for it. Colorado is the second most poorly funded educational state in the country, buddy. What does that mean? It means that we get the lowest amount of public funding of any well, listen, in the country. There's 50 states. There's 50 states. Stop complaining. Go someplace else. Well, why don't you go someplace else? What's that? 4% comes from the tax. The rest is all privately funded by donors. Okay, whatever you say, it's still a public campus. Yes, it is. I don't know what the percentage is. I don't really care what the percentage is. But the fact of the matter is a public, it's not your campus. Does, well, I, no, he said that. He said that. Yeah, he said that. Okay. So you're going to tell me what a Christian is supposed to be like, but you're going to say those, those kind of words? I'm not telling you what a Christian is supposed to be You told me I was giving Christians a bad name. I think you are, yeah. Well, what are you basing that upon, young man? Man, I think that... Most Christians would believe that Christianity is about like generosity and love. And you're here telling us we're all gonna like we're all horrible sinners and we're all gonna die. Nobody wants to hear that, man. Okay, so 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 good Christianity is telling what you want to hear. Can I interrupt? Huh. So good Christianity doesn't tell you the truth, right? It's not about the truth, right? Truth isn't valuable, right? I wanted to have Okay, so then I'm gonna tell you the truth. That's why we're at a college and you're getting your ideas from a two thousand year old book. What's wrong with the book? The book is fine. I like the book. I was pretty happy, dude. So you like the book, but you criticize me getting my ideas from the book. Your ideas don't accurately reflect the book. Prove it. Prove it. Prove it. Prove. Please prove to me, young man, Bible scholar, that my that my words don't reflect the words in this book. I gotta hear this. I've been quoting it. You don't recognize it because you don't know it. No, you. I've been quoting it over and oh, I probably have quoted 50 verses already. I was. But you don't you don't realize because you don't know it. I was trying to ask you a question about what Jesus said about generosity and kindness. I'm well, you give me a verse about that. Get out your smartphone and give me a verse from Jesus about generosity and kindness. I have a question. Yeah, no, it's too hard, right? You know what I'm it's too hard. You're just being lazy. I'm not being You don't have real excuses. You have fake excuses. You have fake excuses. Young man, on Judgment Day, when you stand before Christ, you're going to say, well, that guy on, on UC Boulder, he wasn't generous. He wasn't kind. That's why I rejected you. Why am I being ignored? I'm trying to have a well, you better be. Because it's coming and you're going to be in trouble. I'm trying to have a civil conversation. You're going to go to hell. No, not cool. It's hot. Yeah, it's really hot. My name is Kai. No, I'm worried about you going to hell. I don't want you to go to hell forever. My name is Kai. But that is what will happen on Judgment Day for all sinners. All sinners. We'll end up in a lake of fire if they don't repent. The Bible says the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable murderers 
sexually immoral sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake that burned with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. The words of Jesus Christ and Revelation 21.8. I've been standing here for the last five minutes trying to have a civil conversation with you. I'm here to preach the gospel and I have a civil conversation with you. Then why are you Go over there if you have no conversation. Well, then I'm not going to talk to you then. I'm trying to be a very kind individual here. I'm trying to ask you a question. I'm the Bible says, repent therefore My name is and Tyler. be converted that your sins might be blotted out. That times of refreshing might come from the presence of the Lord. Do you know first Peter? So you really can't reason these things through, can you? All you have is filthy music. You have to try to drown the preacher out, but you can't actually deal with what the preacher actually says. You try to block you're very childish playing music, trying to block cameras. Grow I'm up! Ask you a question. Grow up! You're Stop being, acting like kindergartners with you and deal with up. the word I was of God. To shake your hand and have a conversation with you. I can't hear you. I, need to grow up. I can't hear you. I was trying to ask you a question. You're acting like a kindergartner. You don't understand what you're. What did you say, young man? <laughs> young man, what did you say? <laughs> Do you know what First Peter four eight is? Do you know what First Peter four eight is? No? Let me tell you, 1 Peter 4, 8 says above all, love deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. You don't know what love is. I'll tell you again. Love is not approving of sodomy and lesbianism. Love is not approving of smoking weed. Love is not patting everybody in the back and saying they're okay with God when they're sinners. Love is like not lacking preaching about hell and judgment and sin. Is love, love is what in the greatest good. Love is telling people the truth. To enjoy their day. Love is telling you the truth. I'm here to tell you the truth. Your truth I'm here to tell you the truth. Is very opinionated. His name is Jesus Christ. Your own beliefs. You take no and he says, lay aside all you filthiness yourself. and overflow of wickedness <laughs> and receive. <laughs> See, God doesn't just call you to give up something. God calls you to receive something. God calls you to receive salvation. But you got to do it in meekness. You got to do it in repentance by laying aside all your sin. Laying aside all of your sin and the overflow. It's just overflowing out of your life. The wickedness overflows out of your life through the filth of your mouth, the filth of your actions, what you oppose, what you're for, what you're against. The filth overflows. And it shows you're not right with God. But if you'll humble yourself and repent, God will give you a new heart. God will give you a new heart. Yes, guys. He will remove from your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh and cause you to walk in his ways. It's called becoming born again. And Jesus Christ said, except a man be born again, you will not see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. You know, if you're, if you're, if you're an unbeliever, if you're a sinner, you have no right to claim any of the promises of God's word. How do you know God is All the promises of God's word are for Christians, for righteous people, for those who love God. But listen, if you, if you think my judgment is harsh, if you think my judgment is harsh, wait till you stand before God. The anointing oil was THC. I just judge what I see and what I hear in this very small space of time. But God will judge every deed, even the things done in darkness. God is going to judge them. And you're not ready. You're not ready to be judged by God. You justify yourself in your sins. You justify yourself in your sins, but God is not to justify you in your sins. You're justifying your sin right now. I have no sin. You are sin. Proverbs 17. She'll cast the first stone, my guy. Cast your stone if you have not sinned. John 8, 7 was talking about real stones. I have no stones in my hand. Sir, it's I have God's word, though. I have a life preserver for sinners who are drowning in the sea of sin. <laughs> you who have no 
Brad, if you continue in the sea of sin, you're going to drown. Tell your sins, everybody else. You need to get Proverbs 1715. It is not your job to come out here and spew God's He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the just, both of them alike are an abomination to the Lord. An abomination is coming out. What the scripture teaches. This is not love. This is not God's You remind me of Proverbs chapter 30. Verse 11, 12. There's a generation that has not blessed his mother and cursed his father. The generation that is pure in its own eyes, yet is not washed from its filthiness. That's you. You curse your father, you do not bless your mother. You're pure in your own eyes, yet you're not washed from your filthiness. For what can wash of Way my sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Can I be a Christian if I'm gay? Absolutely not. Can you can you tell me why? That's sin in God's eyes. That's why God says so. What verse? Let me tell you. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in His own blood. Which is always ignored. That's Jesus Christ, the King of Kings. Coming through. Excuse me, I'm standing here. And Lord of Lords. What about what about all the pedophiles in the church? How do you feel about that? They're wicked. They're on their way to hell if they don't repent. Most of them are sodomites anyway. Sodomites. Yeah, most of those who are abusing children like that are sodomites. So my you don't know what good is. Sir, I have read the Bible. Doesn't help you. I have been. It hasn't helped you. I have. I go to church. Doesn't help you. My whole life has been about faith. No, it isn't. It's yes, about it sin. Is. Your life is about your sin. Because I'm gay, immediately that just reacts everything. Now. You, you're more than just gay. Your, your wicked words come out of your mouth. The you false things come out of your mouth. What did I say? I have been asking you a question. Yeah, so the Bible makes it clear. I have been asking you this entire time. Yes. All sin, all sin is wrong in God's eyes. And God will judge all sin. God will judge all sin. And God has a day called Judgment Day when He will judge you for your sin. Judge you for yours as well. But what God really desires for you is that you go and sin no more. What God really desires for you is that you live holy. You know, Jesus Christ Himself said, "If you love me, you'll keep my commandments." So those who claim to love Jesus, are you obeying Jesus? Are you obeying him? Are you obeying him? Yes, I yes I am obeying him. Yes, I am obeying him. I ha I have no problem. I have no problem eating lobster. I have no problem eating bacon. I have no problem trimming my beard. I have no problem wearing wool and linen together. Those things don't apply to me. I'm not a Jew under the Jewish law and the old covenant. I'm a Gentile, new covenant Christian under the new covenant. That's what I am. I have one question. Under the new covenant. So the laws of Moses are not applicable to me as a Gentile, new covenant Christian follower of Jesus Christ. That's what I am. So if you're going to come to me and tell me because you're a sodomite, you want to justify your sodomy, that, oh, you're wearing mixed clothing. Oh, you eat shrimp. Oh, you eat lobster. Oh, you eat bacon. Oh, you trim your beard. You don't understand the Bible. Simple that. It's that simple. You don't understand the Bible. And the Bible makes it clear that natural men cannot receive the things of God. You know, the deeper things of God, you cannot receive those things. What the scripture teaches about in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. According to my Bible, which doesn't apply to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 
According so, to Bible, what makes you believe that your Bible is real? What is the purpose of you doing this? I'm curious. What do you gain from it? What do other people gain from you doing this? I'm just curious. First Corinthians chapter two. No, no, no. Answer Verse thirteen. If you want these to things, we also speak not in words, but man's wisdom teaches, but with the what Holy Spirit he does. From this? Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the this? natural man what does not do receive the this? things of the Spirit of what God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. What do you gain? So I don't expect you to understand the deeper things of God, I how to interpret God's you to word. Understand love. But I the fact of the matter you is, you can understand a basic gospel message. I think all you understand and is the hey. basic gospel message is this: Isaiah 55, 6 through 7. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return well, to the right Lord, here. and he will have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. This young man right here asked me a question, why are you here? What, what do you gain from this? No, number one, number one, I'm here for the glory of God. That's number one. I'm here for the glory of God. I'm here to do his will. I'm here to do what he commands me to do. I'm here to glorify him and the obeying of his gospel and preaching the gospel to sinners. Number two, what do I gain from this? Absolutely nothing. So why are you here? Nothing. Well, I'm not here for my gain. I'm not here for God's glory, not okay. for my gain. Okay. Okay. I'm here for, for God's glory and for your potential gain. But for the walk away, don't make me stand here. Anybody want him here? No, no, no. That's not the way Christianity works. Oh, That's not the way Christianity works. Jesus Christ did not say, stay in the church and wait till they come to you and then tell them the truth. Jesus Christ said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So don't tell me about Christianity. That's what Christianity teaches. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You're right. And no one's shoving it down your throat. No one's making you stand here. No one make you stop. No one's making you listen. No one's making you unplug your ears. You're doing it out of your own free will, out of your own accord. You're doing these things yourself. So really, you're forcing it upon yourself. So blame yourself that you're hearing God's word today. I simply am messenger here to declare unto you the word of God that you might be saved. Ignorance. He that believes in him is not saved. He who does not believe in him is not saved. This is no place for ignorance. John chapter 3, verse 36. He who believes in him is saved. Okay. He who does not believe is not saved, but the wrath of God abides on him. You know, and believing in Jesus Christ, it doesn't mean a mental assent or intellectual agreement about Jesus Christ coming and dying for you. Believing in Jesus is life-changing. It's life-altering. It transforms somebody. It won't leave you as a sinner. It'll make you into a saint, someone who's holy, who's righteous, who follows Jesus Christ. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. So that's that's what it means to truly believe. I'll get to you in a second. Just wait a second. That's what, I'll get you in a second. In a second. That's what it means to truly believe in Jesus Christ. Not just go to a building on Sunday. Not agree to some things in the Bible, but disagree to others and mark them out of the Bible. But it's completely life transformation. You are surrendered completely to Jesus Christ and His Word. Young man, what's your question? What do you think about the Bible when it's done? Okay, so he's talking about the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. Now, when it comes to the Old Testament, the laws of Moses, which God gave to Moses and gave to the Israelites, that was for the nation of Israel. Okay? So when God gave governmental laws, like we have governmental laws here. You break a law of the land here, there's repercussions. There's consequences. Okay? And hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, we'll get to the evolving thing here in a second. But God gave a law to his people, and he expected them to obey it to the letter. And I have no problem with God's law. But living as a Gentile, new covenant Christian under a, an American republic, I don't do those things. God's not called me to do those things. You don't go as radically 
It's not about radical. It's about Old Covenant and New Covenant, young man. Old Covenant is for the Israelites. I'm not an Israelite. I'm not a Hebrew. I'm a Gentile. I'm Irish by, by descent. I'm Catholic. Okay, but you're talking about your descent, your natural descent here. I'm not talking about your religion. I'm also so, so, a, so a Jewish, so a Jewish person, listen, a Jewish person living in a Jewish theocracy is required to obey the laws of Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. You should know that. But I am not. Listen, I am not that. I am not a Jew. I'm not living in a Jewish theocracy. I'm living in an American Republic. Like, what are you doing? Well, just because you don't like my answers, I mean, well, then walk away. Walk away. Go to Alabama. No. No. People are as dumb as me. Well, you say I'm dumb, young man, but you haven't proven that. You say I'm dumb, but you haven't proven that. I spent 12 years in Alabama, and you... What does that mean? You were spinning... Jesus Christ is king of Colorado! Jesus Christ is king of Alabama! Jesus Christ is king of Europe! Jesus Christ is king of kings and lord of lords! And no matter where I am, no matter what anyone thinks, that will never change. I don't care if y'all hate me, I don't care if everybody wants me gone, I'm gonna be here as long as the Lord wants you to declare unto you the truth, because you need it. You, have a you need the truth of God's you have word. A speaker, let other people talk. Nope. You blasting music in my face. No. You blasting music in my face. I'm overcoming that. And you're yelling in our faces. I'm a young. I'm okay, preaching. Okay, you are. I'm preaching. You are amplifying your voice. I was it until she was blasting music in my face. Their pronouns are they them. Because. You're hey, don't be mad this. because I was more prepared than you. More prepared? Don't be mad because I'm more prepared no, than you, okay? No, you're 100% more prepared. I, right now, I wish I was more that? reverse on that. Because you came out here with the goal of essentially preaching hate in you're their liar. eyes. You're a liar. You're a liar. You're a liar. You're a liar. Okay, I'm telling you my interpretation of your words. My but interpretation. But your interpretation doesn't mean anything compared to the truth of God's word. Okay, okay. The truth of God's word. This, this book God here commands is open sinners for interpretation. No, it is not. There's no really? private interpretation. Oh, okay, okay, so that means you also agree when no it's said that it's okay to have slaves. It's okay to stone. The Bible never says okay to have slaves. To Give me a Bible oh. verse that's oh, okay right. to have slaves. I, I mean, I've been reading the Bible for 20 years. i got to see this. Show me where the Bible says it's okay to have slaves. You have been no. reading the Bible verse. Why are you in the Bible to answer my question? First Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. First Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. There's the New Testament, the New Covenant, not the Old Covenant. It says this, do not be deceived. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites will inherit the kingdom of God. There's the Bible verse. We submit to it now. No. Now that I've given you the Bible verse against homosexuality, will you now submit to God's word? I've been trying to answer these for you. I've been trying to ask you a question the entire time. I've been standing here and you have your question. I know the Greek. I know the Greek words behind homosexual and sodomite. You're not going to fool me. I've studied it out. That's right. Malakoi means effeminate. That's what the word for homosexual is. And then, and then the word for sodomite is arsenokotis, and it means man with man in bed. But it ain't. You can justify yourself all you want. Listen, if you want to disagree with God's word, if you want to reject God's word, that's fine. But twisting it to your own destruction, shame on you. God's word says what it says. Reject it or receive it. Can you stop but you cannot continue doing this. Stop ignoring the people. Not ignoring anybody. You're I dealt with your questions over and over again. You don't want to listen to God's word. Maybe you should sit may down I and be have, quiet and have, listen to God's word. Because God's word is way more may important I than your opinions or whatever may it is you want to say. May I have no. his business card? No. 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 I can't have his business That's right. Card. What kind of business? You this is not a business. This is the preaching of God's word. I don't matter. It doesn't matter who I am. It doesn't matter where I'm from. It doesn't matter anything like that. All all that matters that you know you need okay. Jesus Christ. Have you made anybody's day better here? I'm not here to make your day better. Okay, have you? I'm here to glorify God. Okay. I'm not here to make your day better. Glorify God in private. Glorify God. No, glorify God in public. 
glorify God in public by preaching the word. Why don't you go help people? Yeah, can you like clean me like So between the hours of noon and one are the only times you're allowed to have the amplified sound within the fountain area. We're telling them as well. Okay, that's fine. Thank you very no much problem. for obliging. The only reason I used it because she was blasting in my face. Thank you. For... Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm here not to make your day better, not to make you happy, but to tell you the truth that you need to hear. If you go down there, I'll answer your question. As long as you're up here, I'm, I, that's my standard. That's my that's my arbitrary standard. You go down there, I'll talk to you. You're up here, I'm not going to talk to you. That's all there is to it. You don't like that, I'm going to keep on preaching. It's power dynamic, and that's fucked up, sir. Well, you're, you want me to talk to you up here, I don't want to talk to you. So it's your power dynamic. We're Hypocrite. Power dynamic. You're logging I'm your own. On your level. I'm level. Not about I'm levels. Not about, no, about levels. It's about being equal. Not about, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm above you. It's not about we're not equal. It's not about not having. No, you're not. Really, it's not about we're not equal because I think you just said that anyone who is homosexual isn't equal to you. I think that's what you just said. Actually, those words are going to come out of my mouth. Okay, well, that's pretty much the interpretation that I've, I, I perceive here. So because I tell someone they're wrong, that you're means they're not equal no, to me. You are not. You are telling them as a human being that they are wrong. Yep. If you are against I'm wrong? sexuality, I am telling you that I don't agree with your interpretation. So I'm wrong. No, I'm. So now you're you. above me, you no. hypocrite. Now oh, you're I above said, me, you hypocrite. I said I don't agree with your interpretation. Take off the blinders. Everybody is in Stop being to an deluded. See yourself in truth. You want to call me hateful because I don't agree with you. But then you don't agree with me. But you're not hateful so, uh, somehow. I'm not. What a hypocrite. What I'm trying to understand. I'm telling you the truth. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear it. I'm trying to understand. Because you're not a lover of the truth. I am. You love your sin. Have you ever sinned, sir? Thousands of times. Okay, I'm glad at least you're honest with that. Well, I'm honest about everything else for today. Okay. I told you one okay. lie. That's fair. But I've forsaken my sin. I've given my life to Jesus Christ. And now I live a holy life. That, that shit's a Sanctified. Life. Set apart from the world. No. Set apart from sin. Does putting people down make it I'm not putting life? anyone down. Really? Because have you been put down today? Oh, absolutely. Well, so, how, oh. Have put her, how have I put her down? How have oh. I put her down? I couldn't be a Christian and be gay. That's right. It's the truth. No, the truth. not the truth. The truth. I can so, so am I wrong? Am I wrong? Yes, you are. Then you're Incorrect. putting me down. Stop putting me down. Oh Stop putting me down. Oh Stop, Stop putting me down. Sir. I'm going to go cry in the corner now. Come on, gain a spine. People can disagree with you and you can get over it. Okay, then, sir, why are you not letting us disagree with you? You've been doing it the whole time. What are you talking about? Every You've been doing it the whole time. I disagree with you, you say that you're just here preaching the truth. That's what I am doing. That's all you say. That's what I am doing. Truth from a book written thousands of years ago. Multiple, multiple different versions of it. What's wrong with that? Over and over again. You know, young man, when you stand before God, you won't be able to say him, young man. Oh, God, your Bible had multiple versions. Therefore, I couldn't trust it. Therefore, I rejected it. Okay, you know what? You're right. So first off. My bad. Come on in. First off. That's not the way it works. First off, I am Christian. I am Catholic. I believe in God. But the way I see it is you're here to help spread love, promote growth with people, and help each other rise in society and come down from being oppressed. What you are doing is the opposite. You are oppressing my friend here. Your goal is different than my goal. Your goal is different than my goal. Your goal is way different than my goal. You're right. My goal is to spread love no, it's and not. understanding. No, it's not. Really? Your, your, your goal is to, is to, put your goal is to accept everybody the way they are. Are you putting me down? I'm saying right now are you, putting me down? you are putting people down. Are you putting me down? You are making people feel less than they are. You're making me feel less than I am. Oh my god, you are a child. Are you putting me down? You are a child. Okay, I may be putting you down. So, because so you're you're failing in your mission, young man. You're failing. You go, okay, okay. go seek the Lord if and, and regain a mission. If me putting you down is me telling you the truth of what you're doing, if you're all about truth, because the truth of what oh, you're man, doing... How blind are you? How blind That's are exactly you, what I've been saying how the whole time. Are you? That I've been telling you the truth, and you say it's okay. putting people down. You are yelling. The truth is you have put, put her down today. No, I told her the truth. You have yelled at me. I told her the truth. You told me I'm going to hell. What is stopping you from going to hell? That is the truth. Am I going to hell? You are going to hell by sitting here and spewing hatred. Hypocrite. You are an Log. hypocrite. Log. Hypocrite. No. Log. You got a mountain in your eye. God's You got a mountain of hypocrisy in your eye. God's word. You don't know God's love. word. You don't know God's word. You don't know what God's love is. I have read the Bible. What you I have studied Christianity. I Has it helped you? Has it helped you? God's word is love. Has it helped you? You are out here. You don't know what love hate. is. Why are you yelling at me? I thought yelling was hate. You're yelling at us. 
So you can yell at me and it's not yes. hate? Not hate anymore? Oh my god! See? You are a hypocrite! Says who? You literally have been sitting here yelling at us this entire time. The second it gets turned around to you, you turn around and say, No, wait a minute now. I didn't say yelling was wrong. You're the one saying yelling is wrong. No, I'm not. But you're yelling. I don't think yelling is wrong. Therefore, I yell. I'm not being hateful. I'm being loving. Once again, you don't know what hate is. You don't know what love is. That's the problem. I think I do know what hate is. Making someone feel lesser and that they are not worthy of love and that they are not worthy of being on this earth simply because of who they choose to be with, that is hate. Okay, what about a pedophile? You hate them for Does who the they are. Uh, Does a pedophile deserve to be here on this earth? Does a murder, a mass murderer, deserve to be here on the earth? They deserve to be on the earth. They do not deserve to be in society. They deserve oh, to be Oh, so you're putting them down and not loving them and being hateful towards a mass murderer now. No, what I'm doing is I'm saying they deserve repercussions for their actions. You're a hypocrite. You're picking actions. and choosing. And there are repercussions for every sin, whether it's drunkenness, or pot smoking, or lying, or having sex outside of marriage, or being a sodomite. Okay. There are repercussions the first sex, for what you're doing. First time you had sex, were you married? Absolutely not. Okay. Aren't you a sinner? So you are preaching a hypocrite. No, I'm not repented. You're literally not. I've, I've so repented of that. If you repent it, you're free of it all. Yeah, that's you what the Bible teaches. All. Yeah, Christ came to set you free. Christ came to set you free. So of if course, you say, who the Son sets free is free okay, indeed. Okay, so with that logic, a murderer who repents his sins is going to heaven. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. Are you exalting murder or other sins? Are you saying a murderer cannot be saved? I'm Are you? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying they can be saved, okay, but so I'm also saying that it's not as simple as saying, "Oh, I killed somebody. I'm sorry. Boom, I go to Who heaven." Who said that? That you said if I, I didn't repent, say that. I sins. Repent is not saying you're sorry, young man. So repent. go to go to confession and tell the tell Absolutely the not. Then what is repentance? No Roman Catholic garbage in this Bible. Oh, okay. So No Roman Catholic garbage in this Bible. The Bible says, "Repent therefore and be converted what denomination that your sins you, might be blotted what out are you, that times of what refreshing are you, might come what from the presence you, of what the Lord. Are you, so repent is for saving you. You're, you're so sir? rude. You're so rude. What I'm, denomination I'm are you, I'm giving the sir? word of God. You don't want to hear it. I, you could have me not keep saying this if you just told me what denomination you were. I'm curious. You don't direct my steps. What denomination you are you, You don't tell sir? me when to speak what and what to say. What denomination are you, sir? That's what I was saying. What denomination are you, sir? God's desire for you that you forsake your sins. What denomination are you, sir? Repent is you simply say, I'm sorry, you, God, what and keep on doing it. What denomination it's not that you, simple. What the Bible you, says, he who what covered his sins you, will not what prosper. You, but whoever what confesses and forsakes his what sins you, shall what find you, mercy. What so what you, must sir? you do? You must confess what you, sir? and what forsake you, sir? your sins. You, sir? That's the only what way you can find forgiveness. What That's the only what way you can find salvation. And Jesus Christ is through confession and forsaking your sins. Confession Wait, to a didn't man. You, didn't you just confession say confession to a man? The, the confession to a man will do nothing for you. Confession to God and forsaking your sins. Confessing to a priest is what brings church, salvation. Is that not the median in between confession Jesus to God? Christ is the great high priest. There's no longer a priesthood because Jesus Christ has abolished it through becoming the great high priest under the Melchizedek so order. So did you just say there's no such thing as priesthood? That's what I said. So Christ why abolished are there it. Why are there monastics? Good question. Why are there priests when Christ abolished it? You ask the Catholics. They shouldn't be there. Shouldn't be there. And upon that, to add upon that, what denomination? There's no such thing as a pope in the Bible. No such thing as archbishops in the Bible. No such thing as cardinals in the Bible. Well, who gives a shit? No such thing as being abstinent as a Religion rule evolved. in Religion the Bible. Is compound, it builds and that's upon why itself. we find so much wicked stuff in the Roman Catholic Church. So much pedophilia. What denomination are so you, So much sir? wickedness. What so much abomination you, in the Roman Catholic what Church. Denomination and if you're a part what of the Roman Catholic Church, are you? I encourage you to what come out. Are come you? out from what among them and be you? separate, what says the Lord. What denomination are you? Do not... What denomination are you? What denomination are you? So that the Bible what says, denomination are you? Come out from among them and be God, separate, says the Lord. Are you gonna ask Do not what touch the unclean thing, and I'll receive you. Are you? Hey, give me some personal space, man. 
Um, you're in a public space. place. I'm standing right here. Give me some personal space. Give me some personal space. I'm standing right here, sir. Stop yelling in my ear. Stop yelling at these beautiful people. I'm not yelling in their ear. Stop preaching hate. You don't understand. You don't understand what hate is, man. I preach God's word. I do understand what hate is. You call God's word hate because you're a sinner. I'm not. Not once did I call God's word hate. I'm preaching God's word. You're calling it hate. I'm calling your interpretation of God's word hate. Okay, well, interpret this for me. Interpret this for me. Go and sin no more. Interpret that for me. Okay, you go and sin no more. I already have. Beneath you. I already have. You're telling me you will never sin again in your life. I don't know that, but I'm. I'm intentioning and purposing my heart to never sin again. Are you going to answer me? I now could sin. You? But please interpret that for me, young man. It's all about my bad interpretation, right? No. So it's go about your and sin no more. Interpret it. Please Are misinterpret that for more? me. Can I go and sin no more. I agree. But what but I see do it. you is doing. Then do it. I am trying. What I, I see not. you doing. You're coming is against God's word. You're coming against a preacher of God's what word. What I see you, you doing is word. putting you hate God. down on these people. No, that's the truth of God. God's How word. do you tell me you I don't call, love God? No, truth How do you sounds tell like God hate. doesn't love me? Truth sounds like hate to those who hate the truth. You hate the then truth. I can reverse the exact same thing on everything you said talking about truth. You don't have the truth. truth sounds like you don't have God's word. You don't have God's word. You don't have God's, word. Don't have God's, word. Don't have God's word. You have not given me one Bible verse. Because you don't have God's word living inside of you. You're right. I don't have God's word. But you are my disciples but you know indeed if you abide in my words. You I said. have God's love inside of you're me. You're not a disciple. They have God's love inside of them. You're not a disciple of, of Jesus. You don't abide in his word. Are you, you a disciple of Jesus? I am. I am. He is my teacher. Was Jesus not understanding? He was my master. Was no, Jesus he was not understanding? No. no was, was Jesus the... not loving to all? Was well, he not? Love, no, he was. Love so why are you not loving to this person? And right Revelation here? three nineteen. Why do you not this? accept anyone as many other as than I your love? Worldview? As many as I love, I rebuke and chase it. Therefore, be zealous and so repent. Your sugar, is that the Bible says in yeah. Ephesians chapter chapter five: Have no fellowship <laughs> with the unfruitful <laughs> works of darkness. What but denomination rather do you reprove preach this them? Hate for? Second what Timothy denomination do you preach this preach the word for? In season. What denomination and out do you season. preach hate for? Convince, what denomination rebuke, do you this exhort for? with all long suffering and doctrine. I'm long suffering, man. I'm telling you the truth. You don't want to hear it. They don't speak English in heaven. Whatever, man. No, actually, the creator of all languages is God Almighty. The Tower of Babel, he confused their languages, dispersed them abroad, and he, he created all those languages. And so God, God understands all languages in English, Hebrew, Greek, Why are you so scared to answer my question of what denomination I don't have to, I'm not scared, I don't have to answer your question. Okay, then why, tell me why you are not answering my question. Stop yelling in my ear. Okay. Go down there. If I no, I'm not. I'm okay. not going to go below you. I'm on equal playing field to you because we are all equals here. Then go over there. <laughs> See, you no, won't do, you won't do it. Right here. That's right. So you won't do it. So I'm not going to answer your question. Why can't I stand right here? Well, I, I don't like you so close to me. Okay, you don't like it. You're in my I don't like space. you speaking hate to my friends. I'm not speaking here. hate. I'm speaking the truth. In your eyes, it's the truth. In my eyes, it's hate. In God's eyes. In their eyes, it's hate. In God's eyes, Did you talk to God? I did today. Right before I got here. Oh, really? What did he say to you? He's going to preach the word of God. So you, you sat down and you talked to him and, and he told you to you know, come out here and I put understand that, man, because you're not a Christian. You don't know God. Really? You I you, am Christian. You've I'm never, baptized. You're, I'm a Catholic. You've never experienced I go that. worship every day. You've never what experienced God speaking What good do you do for your community? You've never experienced What good that. do you You've do You've never experienced God speaking. I understand really? that because I you don't have. know God. You have no idea how many divine moments of intervention I have had. This ain't one of them. Life. This ain't one of them. Yeah, this isn't a moment of divine intervention. Yes, this the is me on your speaking. Part. The on your this part. This is me standing up for people who are you are you are oppressing. No, you ought to stand up for God. Speech. There's no oppression here. Are you being oppressed? Oh, violently. Well, then there's oppression. Will then walk away? Excuse me. Excuse me. I've been trying to ask you a question. What I'm not here to answer your questions. Yeah, I, just, Wait, I, have have questions. I, just I was talking to her. I wasn't talking to you. What if Jesus was standing? Do you think that well, you haven't experienced what I've experienced from her today. She's been throwing yes, vile yes, things yes, in my yes, ear the whole day. So I'm then, not going to answer her question. If you're then, a man of God, though, I don't believe that Jesus and God would treat you That's not true. Like this. God doesn't always answer people's I questions. And I in fact, really Job, from the book of Job, he had all kinds of questions for God. And you know what happened in the end? God didn't answer one of them. God simply told him who he was, and God, Job put his hand over his mouth and said, I repent. Because that was enough. 
So not about me answering your questions. I tried to have a decent. No, husband. you aren't decent at all. You haven't been decent the whole time. You've been vile the whole time. You've been vile the whole time. You shake my hand while being vile. I'm not gonna shake your hand. I'm not gonna shake your hand while you're being vile. I'm not gonna shake your hand while you have wicked, perverse things come out of your mouth. This entire time. I've not ignored you. I've dealt with you the whole time. I've given you the word of God the whole time. You reject the word of God. No, I reject your word. Well, then reject. Reject it. Reject it. It's to your own detriment, but reject it if you want to. You know, Jesus Christ said about the Pharisees who were offended. The disciples came to him and said, Do you not know you offended the Pharisees? And Jesus said, Leave them alone. They're blind leaders of the blind. See, so Jesus wasn't concerned about who he was offending or who he was not offending. Jesus was concerned about preaching the truth. And I am trying to preach the truth now. You don't know the truth. You don't know what? the truth. How about you let me speak, You don't sir. know the truth in Show man. some respect. You don't know the truth. Show some respect. For the person yelling in my ear the same thing over yeah, and over again, I'm trying you to don't know out. anything you about are. respect. Not you one thing about simple. respect. If you wanted me to stop asking you those questions, you would answer. I don't have to I answer your yell. question. I match your disrespect with equal disrespect. Okay, whatever you, you say. You disrespect my friends, that I, I was saying, disrespect you. The important you thing you need to realize today, young people, Jesus Christ is the truth. So you should know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. My disciples who abide in my word, they know the truth. And all the treasure of wisdom and knowledge is found in Christ. And God's word is truth. And by God's word, you can be sanctified by the truth of God's word. What that means is this. You can be set apart from sin, set apart for God's word, and do the will of God. I pity That's a man with delusions. You're pitying yourself. You're pitying yourself. I pity yourself. a man who puts people down. I You're putting me down. You're putting me down. Interprets the word of the You're Lord. misinterpreting the word of the Lord. I pity a man You're who yourself. shows no respect to anyone other than those with similar views. You pity yourself, doesn't For man. a man like this, you can do nothing else. Respect is not agreeing with you. But pray for this man. Respect is not pray agreeing with you. Delusions. Respect pray for is the not. Pray of hate. For putting down beautiful people on earth who choose to live their lives to the fullest of extent. Just because you don't agree with it does not mean it is Psalm immoral. Psalm 66, does not verse mean 18. It is wrong. If pray I regard a nickname in my heart, the Lord will not pray hear. Pray for the hate to leave his heart. If I regard and pray iniquity in my heart, the Lord will hate. not hear. The Lord won't even hear your prayers. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. If you have sin in your life, unrepentant sin in your life, God doesn't even hear you. He doesn't pay attention to your prayers. It's useless. It's vain words. If you want God to hear your prayers, you've got to be righteous. you got to be holy. You can't continue in sin and expect a holy God, a thrice holy God, to pay attention to your sins, to pay attention to your prayers. If you really want God to hear you, you got to forsake your sins. Can you answer me? The Bible says the sacrifice of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. He's near to those who have a broken heart and save those that have a contrite spirit. Told you, you got to go over there, man. I'm not going to listen to you. Okay, but what does nope. 1 Peter 4 8 say? Nope. I'll go over there if you tell me what it says. No, over there and I'll tell you what it says. 1 Peter 4 nope. 8. What does 1 Peter 4 8 say? Okay, fine. I mean, over here. The Bible says, First Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It'll be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. You need to fear God. You fear too much. You need to fear God and stop fearing man. Stop worrying about what everyone else thinks about Why you. Why would I fear someone that loves me? The Bible tells you to. Yeah. You don't know God's word. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, the Bible says. No, the only wisdom is in knowing that you know You don't nothing. know God's word. The only true wisdom the is in knowing The fear of God you know is nothing. clean, enduring forever. You treat it like it's dirty. No, it's a clean thing to fear God. The Bible says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It'll be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Many of you come here, young people, seeking out God, the purpose for your life. Well, in Ecclesiastes, the last two verses of the book of Ecclesiastes says this, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all.
It's the whole duty of man to fear God and keep his commandments. For the Bible teaches. And you say to me, why should I fear God? He commands you to fear him. You have every reason to fear God. God is inherently loving. God is inherently God is angry with the wicked every day. God is angry with the wicked. God's going to cast the wicked into hell and every nation that forgets God. These are Bible verses. Open up your Bible and see for yourself. No, 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 no. Get back to him, man. It's not your son. It's not your property. So telling someone they're going to hell not your property. Is that not hateful? No, because Jesus Christ, who is God in flesh, don't touch the sign. God is love. He, your man, it's not your property. Yes, that's what the Bible says. What Jesus Christ said. Oh my God. And Jesus Christ's words. Luke chapter 12, verses 4 through 5. And I say, to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who can kill the body and after that have no more they can do. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. The words of Jesus Christ. like you who put people down of Jesus Christ trying to exist about hell and about fearing God the words of Jesus Christ do you know what is beautiful Deal with it. diversity do you know, you know what's beautiful, beautiful? God's words you know what's beautiful fearing God My friend here is beautiful. you know what's beautiful hate loving is God not beautiful you know what love, love is God are you know what hate is the hate you preach is no, not I don't. The hate you preach does nothing good here. It may make you feel better. It may make you feel purpose hey and fulfilled. I've been going for like two hours or something like that, hour and a half. <laughs> okay. Find the love in your heart to understand how other people. The Bible can live says God is love. God is love. Yes, God is love. And the love God is not this. The love in God, the Bible, God is not will cast this. most people into hell. Now tell me about your love now. And I will see you in hell. I won't be sir. there, sinner. Yes, I will I see won't you be in there. hell. I won't be there. You just said that you said all sinners go to hell. No, no. I will meet you I in hell. I repent. Say it clear. No hate is welcome here. Say it loud. Say it clear. No hate is welcome here. Say it loud. Say it clear. No hate is welcome here. Say it loud. Say it clear. No hate is welcome here. Say it loud. Say it clear. No hate is welcome here. Say it loud. Say it clear. No hate is welcome here. I can't hear you. Stay alive, stay clear. No hate is welcome here. Stay alive, stay clear. No hate is welcome here. The Bible so, tells me to preach. So I'm going to do it by God. Okay, but does do. the Bible I'm tell taking, you I'm to preach? Your advice. Oh, wait, hold on. Hey, hold on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So, like, they can do their shit, you can do yours. It's totally fine. But, like, I can tell you, if you come here and preach, there's going to be a whole lot of people to preach against you, and they're going to preach louder because there are a lot more of you than there are. There. Blessed is the man who walks not in the council than God. I don't walk in your council, man. All right, man. I respect it. But so, God is love. But the Bible says, the words of Jesus Christ, Matthew 7, verses 13 to 14. Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way, which leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. But narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way, which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Hey, wait, if we don't sin, Jesus died for nothing. So are you saying, young man, that God ordains you to sin? How long are you going to waste these people's times? When are you going to leave? Well, God can God can forgive you for your sins. I agree with that. But he doesn't automatically forgive you for your sins. Not automatic. Just because just because Jesus died for it does not make it automatic. Well, you, you mystifying God's love, obviously, because God doesn't forgive everybody. According to what I just quoted from Matthew 7, 13 to 14, many are going to hell, few are going to God's kingdom. So not everybody's saved, young man. Not everybody's forgiven. Not everybody's cleansed. I want God desires that for you. God wants you to be saved. God wants you not to perish. He wants you to have eternal life. But that's your choice. Yes, it is our choice. So why are you here? Exactly. Yes. It is our choice. 
Why? So why? God creates people in his image. Good, good point. So why would he good not point. create somebody hey, hey. like my friend He here? made a good point. Why would he want to go to heaven with people like me when he's a sinner? I agree. You have to forsake your sins to be a Christian. You have to live holy. If you are a sinner, you're right. You won't fit in in heaven. You won't fit in in God's kingdom. You gotta repent. You gotta become a former sinner, a former fornicator, a former drunkard, a former pot smoker, a former homosexual. Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna stand out like a sore thumb. You say those people. The Bible says. You don't fit in here. You're right. You stick out like you're a right. Some you're right. That's so biblical. Go. I don't belong here. So go. I'm not a. If you recognize that, then leave. No. No one here wants you I'm here. A, I'm a pilgrim. I'm a sojourner in this place. I'm an alien and stranger in this world. I don't belong to it. I belong to a different kingdom. But I'm they here. Go back. No. Nope. I'm here. Back. I'm here as an ambassador of Christ. Nobody I'm here as an ambassador. Of, I didn't come. God Lord did. did. God not did. Tell you God did. You preach God, God did. My friend. God did. God told me to come here. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. I don't care if you want me here. I don't care if you hate me. I don't care if you kill me. I'm still gonna be here. Anybody, yeah, you, you hate me? You're putting words you in my God. mouth. Have once I said I hate God. Have once I said I hate you. Have once I said I hate I said I disagree have once I said I hate anybody. with your intention. Have once I said I hate anybody. Um, but you're declaring me to being hateful. Yeah, I, I am telling you that you hate people, Hypocrite. considering that you Hypocrite. said Hypocrite. that someone who is homosexual Bible. goes to hell. Bible. What the Bible says. Ray, bro. Are you leaving No, my, my friend Adam's going to preach to you now. So make, make sure you show him the same love and acceptance you showed me. Hear the cries of the damned made move us to compassion. Oh, hear the cries of those in chains. May we free them with the truth. Send me, my God, send me. Oh, Lord, send me. I'll go, send me. Oh, Lord, send me. My God, send me. Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. Glory be to Jesus Christ, both now and forever.